everybody to Monster Vision. I'm John English, and it's great to have our Monsters Roundtable here uh, this week for a big batch of news that we've got uh, regarding the Fresno Monsters and uh, their future in the in the coming season and seasons to come. And uh, just for that occasion, uh, coming out from behind the curtain, James Carr for the first time joining us here on Monster Vision out in front of the camera. James is, of course, the guy who puts all of this together uh, after we film it every week. James, thank you so much for joining us this week. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. It's uh, quite a change to be on the other side of the screen for once. Great. I mean, you're still going to have to do it on the other side, too, but <laughs> <laughs> That's you always, right. do a, always do a fantastic job. And, of course, Ryan Rivera and Kalal Mulaney with us again as well. Um, thank you guys for taking the time. And the big news everybody saw this week, we have a new league that the Fresno Monsters are joining. They have left the WSHL and are headed to the United States Premier Hockey League, uh, along with a bunch of our uh, old friends from the WSHL, uh, the Anaheim Avalanche, uh, formerly Ontario Avalanche, looks like they're calling themselves Anaheim again. Uh, the San Diego Sabres are moving over, the Utah Outliers, Southern Oregon Spartans, Las Vegas Thunderbirds, Pueblo Bulls, and Northern Colorado Eagles. Uh, they will all be coming together to form a new Western Conference within the USPHL's Premier Division. Um, so there's a lot of rumor rumors still going around. Uh, I did notice uh, some online chatter about um, Ogden not being on WSHL's website anymore. So perhaps they're coming over too or moving somewhere else entirely. Um, what did you guys make of the, the, the big announcement this week? Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a good thing. I mean, this is a good league. Uh, yeah, I mean, for sure. I think it's a great move. Um, you know, talking with the management a little bit over at the monsters, uh, they put a real emphasis on putting a focus back on player development. And I think this league is, is awesome at doing that. I like the, that we're, uh, we're expanding a little bit towards the east uh, with Colorado and uh, being the first east, it looks like. <clears throat> That'd be fun to, to bring all them, maybe bring in a little bit more different uh, type of players coming from the east coast, saying that, hey, maybe we want to try the west coast, and uh, they're still in the same league, but now they're out in the west coast playing. Yeah, I think it's really going to be a, a good job uh, for the Monsters. I um, have a personal friend that's uh, coaching one of the other divisions there, and he said the league's really good. He said it's a lot like the Western States League, so it'll be very comparable for us. Um, but like James said, it's more based on skill development for the players and moving them on to the college level. So it'll be uh, – I imagine it's going to be some really good hockey. Now the hey, you know what? I was actually uh, yeah, looking at their website, and if you go under, like, their college commitments, since, like, two, 2015, they've had, like, almost 800, like, college commitments. So, I mean, that's, like, freaking that huge. fantastic. Yeah, that's, a, that's, my, that's what my friend said. He said almost every kid that's aging out goes to college there in that league. So, I, I, that was, that's pretty impressive. And then, so, it, it could be nothing but good for those kids that want to continue their hockey career. That is fantastic. And and a and, uh, little point of clarification, because the rumor mill has been going crazy all week long. Uh, there was a statement from the WSHL. Uh, they are not going away. They're actually talking about, uh, you know, creating some expansion teams to kind of make up the gap. So if you uh, have been following the Monsters because you're particularly a fan of the WSHL, it looks like they are going to continue what they're doing, uh, even though essentially everybody west of, I guess, Minnesota, Kansas, thereabouts, you know, moved over to the USPHL. Um, Valencia did not come over there without a rink right now, and we don't know if the Flyers are going to be a team next year or, or what's happening with them. Um, but it does look like, uh, you know, there might be more teams moving over still, uh, too. So we'll have to stay tuned on that. Um, James, you're a little bit uh, a little bit on the inside of things with the monsters there. Did, what did you hear, and what did you take away um, about how this move came about? Uh, so, for the most part, the monsters were concerned about player development. Um, in the last few years, we haven't seen as many players move on, um, and we really wanted to shift that organizational focus back to player development um, and moving players on to the next level, like, you know, NCAA or 
going to play pros in either European leagues. Um, that really became a big concern for the Monsters. And we wanted to get back to that because, like, B-Rib can back me up on this. Back in, you know, like 2014 and before that, we were moving almost, you know, seven to ten players every year to the next level. And the last couple of years, we just hadn't seen that as much. That is a good point. I mean, I mean it, it, that's part of what these leagues are for is, is, is to connect players with, you know, scouts and opportunities in other places. And, and you know, the, the USPHL does seem to have a very good reputation, as b was, was was talking about before, about, you know, moving those players on and, and getting them roles in other places. And, and, and they've got the resources to do it. Um, so this, I, I mean, I only see positives coming out of, uh, out of this for, for the, uh, for the monsters and, and, and players that come to play here in Fresno. One of the things I heard, and, and I, I don't know how true it is. It, it, I heard mention from a few folks that, uh, the WSHL showcase this past year, there was like the, the scouting turnout was way down and, 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 um, things along the lines of, of, you know, some games not having anybody there seeing what was going on and, and things like that. Did you guys hear anything about that? I heard. I was here for a little bit of it. And I, I mean, yeah, I, I didn't seem there didn't seem to be as many scouts and coaches there, uh, per se, as in, in the past. But I think a lot of it has to do with the timing of the tournament. Right. Because talking to some of those coaches in the past, there's only a select, window that they can do recruiting and actually talking to players and sometimes um you know they're they're still their their school break is not at the same time as the showcase so they can't leave they can't really contact the players it's it's all a very weird dynamic right in that time frame about when they can come and who they can talk to and what they can talk to and as, as far as timing go yeah, I think that's going to be, like, pretty interesting, too, is because the showcase for the U.S. PHL is in Boston. And that's, right. like, within, you know, throwing distance of a dozen D3, D1 college schools. Yeah, that's, that's, D, that's D3 territory, you know. And I also saw, too, that they have two showcases. They have a spring one and a summer yeah, one, which was kind of interesting, but I don't know how that. Yeah, they, they actually have work. three. They have winter, spring, and summer. Okay. That is a fantastic opportunity for uh, you know scouts to get some eyeballs on 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 these guys and and uh, you know see what their next steps might be. We want you to keep your eyeballs on Monster Vision. Stay with us. Quick word from our sponsors, and we will be right back. Goals. Assists. Save percentage. Statistics are the most accurate way to judge the success of a hockey player and a league. And we're back. Thank you for uh, joining us here for Monster Vision. James Carr, Kalam Mulaney, Brian Rivera. Um, We've been talking about the Monsters move to the USPHL, and uh, one of the things I noticed on the announcement that came out from the new league, um, it, it mentioned the Monsters playing at Selland Arena. Uh, there was no mention of Gateway Ice Center. Is the split of home games still going to be, you know, primarily what we go with, or is there some kind of new exclusivity to Selland built into this new deal? What, what's the expectation there? Has anybody heard anything? I didn't have to question more than anything, right? <laughs> you know what? I, I, I've, I've talked with uh, the ownership group, and as of right now, it's going to stay split. Okay. Uh, um, it's going to be Friday, Saturdays to sell on, and, you know, probably Thursdays over at Gateway. That makes most um, sense. I, I, I think attendance-wise and things like that, the ability for people to get out to the rink, um, you know, gate, and Gateway lends itself so well to those, uh, those uh, you know, midweek games, too. Um, you know, I, I think that makes the most sense. Although I did see um, Las Vegas was announced at playing uh, playing in a new spot. They're going to be in the training facility for the Golden Knights, so they're upgrading a little bit um, in terms of what they're doing, which is good to see investment there uh, from the uh, 
from the community there and, and the Thunderbirds being able to get that uh, get that facility for, for their use. That's, yeah, that's that, great. Yeah, that's a beautiful uh, facility they're going to be playing at. Uh, the, the Knights obviously built uh, a brand new practice facility for, for the Knights, you know, beautiful two sheet rink. Uh, it's just gorgeous. And so it's, it's going to probably be one of the nicest places to play in besides if you're like in a real arena like Ogden, you know, they're, they're in a beautiful arena. You know, we play in the sound arena, but after that, that's probably gonna be the top place to play. And that to, to me could be uh, a real good selling point for them. Absolutely. Um, so for those of you who've been joining us on the broadcasts uh, on Black Dog Hockey, uh, it does look like we'll be moving over to uh, Hockey TV, which is uh, the service that the USPHL uses. A lot of better options there. Um, it, I was kind of poking around trying to see what that was going to look like for us. It looks like you can watch Hockey TV through the Fast Hockey Roku app and things like that. So a little more accessible um, ease of use is, is going to be, a, you know, inconvenience is going to be a thing there. I think our broadcasts from here are going to feel much the same, but I know we made some big improvements uh, equipment wise at the end of the season. And, you know, we were continuing to look at doing that. Um, but from the user's end, from, from, from the audience end, it's going to be much more stable and, and easily accessible. Not to badmouth Black Dog, we love those guys, um, but you know this is a, a, a big deal for us. Uh, you know, moving up the ladder a little bit uh, as well. So, I, I mean, I know from you guys, you know, watching t game tape back and things like that. I mean, this is a this is a game changer in, in that end too. Yeah, it's great fun to watch it. Uh, we bring the boys back home after a game and. We'll sit there and watch the game and see where, you know, the spectacular plays they did or the bonehead plays they did or <laughs> stuff like that. You know, just have good times with it. So it was great with Black Dog Hockey to, to rewind and go back and look at their game that night or the night before. And yeah, it was pretty good fun to do that. So it's great either way. The hockey TV, I'm sure, will do the same thing. Yeah, okay. it could be a really good developmental tool, like Klaus said, for, oh, yeah. You know, if, if, the, if, the, if, if the quality of the picture is. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about this. <laughs> um, but if, if if the quality of the picture is uh, is good, it could be a, a real good uh, a teaching tool for for video for the players to um, you know for a coach to break down game tape it and, and have a quality of viewing of um, you know what's going on. Absolutely. Uh, so we put out a call on the Monster social media, which, of course, if you're not following us on social media, please do. Um, wanted to open up the Monster's mailbag here and, and uh, see what, uh, what questions uh, our followers had about the move. Uh, Vanessa uh, wanted to know, what made you guys decide to move to the USPHL? Uh, what, what's the thinking behind making a, a, a change like this uh, from, a, from a franchise perspective? Uh, I think from a franchise perspective, uh, it mainly came out of what was best for our players and watching the level, the quality of play on the ice. Um, we are expecting that the quality of play on the ice is going to go up. And when it goes up, it's more fun to watch at home. And it's more fun for our fans in the stadium. Uh, nobody wants to see a blowout, you know, so – it's just more fun to see a good hockey game that's 3-2 instead of 9-1. Exactly. What, uh, what tier are we? Is this going to be tier 2 still? Uh, it's tier 3. Tier 3. Yeah, so we're going, we're going back to like the old school days, you know? Yeah. Uh, so we're going back to tier 3. But like I said, I mean, I, I think the quality of play is going to go up. Yeah, be faster, uh, faster, more skilled players. Yeah, I mean, especially with so many college commits on the ice, I mean, these guys aren't messing around. These guys are here to play some aggressive hockey, and I think that you'll see the quality just go way up. I mean, the speed's going to be phenomenal, I think. It's going to be good for competitive balance. I, it, one of the teams that I was surprised to see move over, honestly, and not to pick on them, but was uh, Southern Oregon. Um, because there was so much up in the air with them in terms of, uh, you know, they had some leadership changes and things like that. Uh, this past season and the season before and uh, you know they they were one of those teams that when they came into town it's like okay it's going to be 9-1, 10-2, 11-3. Um, 
So seeing them move over and, you know, maybe seeing that, uh, that from their end, there's going to be some reinvestment in the, in the product there. Um, surprised me to see, to see them coming with us, but uh, also, you know, kind of a pleasant surprise. I'm anxious to see what having all those players, uh, you know, with college commitments and things like that um, is, is going to mean for the on ice product. It's more fun to call a close game and a quality played game uh, than these blowouts all the time. Absolutely. It becomes boring. Yeah, for... yeah I mean, I, I think everyone was a little surprised about uh, Southern Oregon coming over, but their new owners are freaking amazing, and their fan base is, is one of the best that was on the West Coast. And honestly, moving to this new league, I think recruiting is going to be a lot better as well. And I think a lot of these teams are going to get more exposure and that's going to work out in the long term. Yeah. I talked to the Southern Oregon coach last year uh, when they came and played at San Marino the first time. And he told me that he only taken over the team about six weeks before the season started. So he was really behind the eight ball in uh, finding players. So to, to come out with the group that he did, you know, that looked, that late is, um, you know, he, I, you just have to commend him for the job they did. And, and James is right. They, uh, you know, they have one of the better crowds. Um, they're that little town that buys into their team. And it's a, it's a pretty neat atmosphere to go play in. So that, that should be good for them as well. Definitely a good selling point. Next question, uh, Don wanted to know, how different are the rules from the WSHL? And does, uh, you know, the huge number of teams that are in uh, the USPHL, does that mean more games, a longer season? Uh, what does all of that look like uh, in the new league? Uh, so the, the regular season is 44 games. Okay. Uh, so we're actually losing a couple games. Uh, but with that, the, as far as game rules and regulations going to change, you're not going to see really a big difference. I'm sure B-Riv can probably tell you a little bit more than I can. Uh, what I can tell you is that this new league adheres more to NCAA rules. And one of the big concerns from the Monsters was the fight rule. Um, the fight rule is, in this new league, it tends to be if you get in a fight, it's an automatic game ejection. And in the dub S, it was five minutes, and you're back in the second period. Right. Um, so – for the Monsters, that is going to be really tough, man, because we've always played so aggressively. And when you name off, like, half of our popular players, half of them are fighters. And, I mean, even looking at our coaching staff, I mean, our one before Trevor was Killer Kaminsky, <laughs> most famous Kaminsky, fighter yeah. in the shell. Our strength conditioning coach, Brandon Bullitt, yeah. another famous person for getting in fights in the hockey. So, I don't know, man. I think that's going to be a struggle for the Monsters. Well, and, and that's, you know, that is going to be a struggle because that's one of those things where I look back and, and you know, looking at the, like the old Falcons days even, that's kind of been one of the benefits to the Monsters is, is the, the feel of that aggressive style of play coming back a little bit versus, you know, it's maybe the ECHL era of the Falcons and things like that where things were a little more laid back and a little more measured. Um, these guys are going at it tooth and nail. And I think that probably has has – raise some interest from some of the older fan base as well, you know, as well as, you know, obviously younger people, you know, like, like all of us, uh, spring chickens always like seeing those, uh, those yes. guys mix it up. And, and uh, so, yeah, that'll be a, that'll be a tough adjustment. Yeah. I think yeah, uh, with the skilled players coming along uh, in the NHL now, the game has gotten a lot faster. And even what Killer was saying on the last show that he would have to change his whole it's way of playing. Game just to play in the league now. So it's kind of gearing towards that way anyways, where, you know, they're trying to get away from the fighting, even on the lower level, uh, the kids games, they're trying to get away from even, the, you know, they move checking up from, uh, to Bantams, where you can't check until your Bantam leagues. So they're trying to get away from that physicality of the game and get more into the skilled players. So I see that transition going into the college ranks as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, the college game is, is quick. But there still is some, some great physicality to it. So I, I don't see the physicality going down. I think it's going to be more on how coach and the players react to, to what's going on in the ice and see if they can control their tempers. Because realistically, you go on to college, it's, it's going to be the same rule. 
you fight, you get kicked out of the game, and you get suspended. So it's just starting them a year or two earlier, depending on their age, for something that they can work on when they get to that college level. So, I mean, yeah, it's going to be a bummer because, like John said, some of us here like to see the old odd tussle. And I'm not saying that there won't be any, but it, it, it's definitely going to be a much more measured approach and uh, definitely going to change the style of the game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, it's not to say, like, you know, that aggressive style or those uh, fights are going to go away. I mean, if you mm-hmm. – I know I did. The first thing I did is I went and typed in USPHL fights, and <laughs> those kids are still throwing, throwing yeah. haymakers. So, I mean, it, it's going to still be there. It's just I think you're going to see less of it. Correct. And, that, I mean, all in all, that, that might be a good thing with, you know, concussion protocols and things like that being what they are. And, and, and you know, you get more of the skill guys in there, you know, doing their thing. It's still going to be a great night of hockey every time you come out. Uh, to the rink and, and see these guys play. It, 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 I, I would hope that uh, it's not a shocking change for people, uh, but I, I think there's still plenty there for, for people to, to wrap their arms around. Uh, one more question here. I, th- uh, I think, uh, hey, John, I think also on that topic, though, is if you just get a well-played hockey game, people tend to forget about, sure. hey, exactly. there wasn't a fight. You know, it's more when the games are, boring it's like well why doesn't somebody do something you know let's interject some energy i think if this thing is going the way it is and it's going to be uh exciting back and forth hockey i the you know the missing of a fight here and there i don't think people are going to notice yeah one more question here uh david wanted to know uh it's kind of a twofold question part of it we've already covered a little bit what are the benefits to the monsters leaving the wshl for the usphl i think we talked about uh a lot of that in terms of you know player development and and, and all of the benefits there but how much traveling to the midwest or the east coast do we anticipate uh, I'm, that's, that's going to be up in the air, man. Maybe Bay Area yeah. wants to take it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would, I would imagine that we're not going to see the same teams in our division, all 44 games. Obviously I know they're going to go out East, um, for their showcases, but maybe we can get some of those teams in, in the Midwest there, Minnesota, Chicago, Michigan, Ohio to make a, a little road trip and, you know, maybe spend two, three weeks out on the West coast playing some different teams. I don't, I don't know. It's it's really going to be interesting. Yeah. I I think, uh, I think the, if we do travel East, it's probably going to be like Colorado um, who's in the Western conference. Um, I don't think you're really going to see us like flying off to New York to go take on the Jersey Hitmen or the Islanders, but (laughs) you know, I think you're going to see us take on, like, teams like Colorado. Um, and then I know for sure we're going for the winter showcase. And then, obviously, the finals are in mass as well. Okay. And, and you know, I, I kind of wonder with, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see what the USPHL does with this batch of new teams coming in because there's more than enough to have two divisions out of this, uh, out of this group of us and, and basically have the Monsters in there with Las Vegas and – and San Diego again, and uh, Southern Oregon, and then make another one out of uh, another division out of Utah, and, and whoever else comes over, uh, Utah, Northern Colorado, and those folks. So it, it you know it may be that this is two divisions that they're adding in rather than one, um, since there's bound to be before this is all over with. From the sound of it, seven, eight, maybe nine teams coming in. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if you if you look at that press release that the league sent out. Mm-hmm. Um, they say, like, this isn't the end of the announcements. It's only yeah. the first half. So yeah. there's more teams coming in. So yeah. where they're going to be from, who knows. But uh, cool. I have a feeling they're probably going to be closer here on the West Coast. Yeah. Well, I, I would imagine if, like, Ogden comes in, then we can keep the West Coast teams in one division, Oregon, us, San Diego, Anaheim, Las Vegas have a five-team division, which wouldn't be too bad. Yeah. And then if they come in over there, then they'll have a four-team division. And I think it might be even more enticing for that that area, that region of the country, to grab another team because that would be a little more cost-effective than 
having to come out here, uh, you know, four or five times for for series games. Yeah, yeah, travel's gonna be huge, man. Um, I don't know. I mean, you guys probably do remember, but Fresno Monsters had a null team. And yeah. one of the big things that hurt us with the null team was travel costs. I mean, it's not easy when your closest opponent was in Alaska, you know? Yeah. It just, yeah. it kills you. So, yeah, I think uh, travel is probably going to be more limited, but I do see us going and playing some other teams in different states. And I think they're going to be coming here too, which is going to be awesome. And, and I think that is, that's got to be something that was talked about during the negotiations to make all this happen. We are going to have Jeff Blair on at some point before the start of the next season to kind of give us a rundown on how all of this uh, is going to work once things shake out a little bit more uh, with the USPHL uh, transition and all of that. Uh, we should have some good things to talk about. We'll have uh, uh, Coach Trevor on again as well um, to kind of cover a lot of, you know, it, it, it's early as far as as far as this move this just happened so um there's a lot up in the air and i i know there's going to be a lot more news uh coming um uh, you know what real, real yeah, fast before it. we move on i did see on one of the mail time little comments was uh i think it was from bommel's dad uh how many imports you can have oh right i did confirm this with uh, the ownership group it's unlimited in this league oh that's great so, I mean, that's freaking that huge. Definitely. Yeah, because I, I, I was wondering the same thing, and I look, and it's weird. Like, there's, I saw one team with a bunch of Europeans on it, and a lot of the other teams only had two or three. So it's, it's, really, it, it's really interesting to see how the teams break down for what, for what players they're going to get. You know, I'm, I imagine Michigan, Minnesota could all have a bunch of local kids, you know, from – from that area, Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey. I would imagine all those teams will have local kids too. It's the outlying teams, kind of like us, that might have the more of the of the imports. Okay. Uh, last word here from you guys. Uh, you know, I, I'm looking at this as like, uh, you know, it, it, it's Christmas in April because we have been starved for some news about – the monsters about sports, about all, you know, anything, something going on right now during this, uh, this lockdown situation that everybody's dealing with. Um, so Christmas in April, what do you guys wish for most with regards to this uh, monsters move? What's on your wish list? What do you want to see happen? Well, I, I think for, for me, it's just the quality of hockey. You know, James, James talked about it a little bit earlier how the quality's you know kind of gone down a little bit i'm really looking forward to seeing some ex some exciting hockey you know some back and forth up tempo college style hockey you know a lot of people if you haven't watched college hockey it doesn't get a lot of play on tv but if you if you do get that chance to watch it it's a great game to watch they can move the puck they can show some great skill lots of speed there are, like i said there is some physicality so it's going to be a real good step for us and i'm really excited about it yeah, I think it's about the same. I echo that as well. I just want to see some. I mean, it's not like we never had good players, but I like to see the quality of play get uplifted a little bit more. Uh, the speed, the the skills, all that. But that's what I'm looking for. You know, maybe bring a lot more players from the East Coast that normally wouldn't want to come to the West Coast, uh, come over here and and give us a try and say, hey, you know, this isn't too bad over here in California or anywhere on the West Coast. Yeah, I'm with Kalaw a little bit. I, I'm excited to see uh, East Coast players come a little bit more to the West. Um, I know we had, like, Logan and Max who were kind of from the Midwest and the East. Um, I'm excited about that. And I think the biggest thing I'm excited about is seeing players move on to the next level again uh, okay. on a bigger scale. Yeah. That's the biggest thing for me and what I'm most excited about because it's awesome to catch up with these players and then tell you, like, hey, I'm going to the European league, you know, like I just, I just talked to Nolan and he's going to the European league and, you know, he was super excited and we were cutting film together. And that's really what I want to return back to is seeing that. So if I understand this right, that the monsters will be in the premier league, which is one below their NBC or ND NCDC. NCDC league. Yeah. 
yeah. correct? Correct. Which is, that is their developmental league for their Division One teams or to, to right. filter into the Division One. So we're we're right below that. The good thing that I like about all this too is that they even have lower playing levels. Yeah, your 18U, uh, 16U, 15U teams as well. Do we think that because of this transition, do you think that Fresno might transition into that league as well? Uh, it's hard to say at this point because, I mean, right now it's it's so shaky. You know, we're just trying to get our footing into this league. Um, but the, the overall plan from what I've heard and talked to people about is – we really want to get the, get it again and get rolling again with like our junior hockey teams where it's like nine U up to tier three. And then with that NCDC league, it's just another opportunity for our players to go into a true tier two free to play league and get ex more exposure. Um, and that's just super exciting for us because the monsters want to build this hockey community up. We've seen what Vegas can do when the golden Knights came in. And we want the same thing. We want the junior monsters to be developed. And, I mean, if you look at our rosters from 2009 to where we are now, our hometown boys are just not, not there as much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a couple of years ago when Scheuer was captain, we had like half the team was – not half the team, but a good chunk, like five, six players were here from Fresno. Now we're lucky if we get two or three. Um, so it'd be nice to get those local boys back up and playing again. And I think, you know, you could also make a affiliation maybe with another hockey club that's a little bit stronger. Let's say San Jose or right. Santa Clara or something mm -hmm. in the Bay Area that's got a little bit stronger program that they're looking for a little feeder system into that league. That might be an opportunity uh, for the Monsters to get a little bit, you know, uh, the local player, you know, coming from. Because even now we don't have a lot of players from, let's say, just California on our team anymore as much as we did before. We have, you know, a lot from everywhere else. So I think if we just go back more maybe to a regional, you know, maybe develop some kind of partnership with one of the – either, you know, a club in the Bay Area, a club down in the Southern California, and, and, and see where it goes. And maybe that will help, uh, you know, build our program as well. Yeah. And, you know, what I'd really like to see come out of all of this is opportunities for Monsters players. When, when guys come here and they throw on that black and green jersey and they invest their time and, and, and you know, key part of their life to uh, playing the game and, and, and choosing to do it here, I want to see that mean something for them moving forward more than it has in, in recent years. I, I don't want to talk to, to players midway through the year and, and you know, hey, where are you, what, what's, what are your plans for next year? I don't know. I might do this. I might do that. I want to hear, you know, that they've got great things lined up because they were here. Um, that's what we want to see. And that's what I think uh, the USPHL is going to help the Monsters uh, provide uh, for these guys because they're giving it their all and uh, we should be able to, to have a system for them that, that's going to take them places. 100%. So with that, uh, you know, one thing I wanted to mention in here is, is a big thank you uh, to the Western States Hockey League and to Black Dog Hockey. Uh, it's been a great system to be a part of. Um, and for me, working with the Black Dog guys uh, throughout the last season, it's been a tremendous experience. Uh, we wish them the best of luck because the more hockey there is, uh, the better hockey is overall as well. So uh, we wish them uh, all of the best in the years to come and, and hope things uh, go extremely well. Uh, for all of them. We also want to thank our advertisers uh, for sponsoring Monster Vision and their support of the Fresno Monsters. And thank you, thank you, thank you to the Monsters fans for making all of this possible. Uh, it is you guys that are the reason why this team is able to move up into a brand new exciting league and uh, all the great things to come are because of you. And when we can get out of our houses, get back down to the rink and support the Monsters. And uh, while we're at it, you know, if you're watching us here on YouTube, uh, subscribe, uh, follow us on social media, like us on social media, share our stuff, engage with us. We are here uh, to get you through the hockey withdrawals 
of this offseason. For all of the guys here, as well as Darren Redmond, our producer, and a big thank you to the folks at CMAC, I'm John English. We'll see you next time here on Monster Vision.